This is going to end. You know how this is going to settle. He knows how when the dust is going to settle. He knows when the water is going to recede. He knows everything. He knows how this is going to calm down. He's never in a panic situation. And that's what proactive people are all about. Proactive people uh, are not in a play, uh, not in a situation of where they hit the panic button immediate. Or, or not immediate. They don't hit the panic button. They are in control. They are in control. They assess the situation very well. Uh, they are in control of the situation very well. They are uh, responsive or rather they are very much prepared uh, for <coughs> uh, to respond to any kind of changes. They, they embrace changes and in that changes, if they, if they, if they have to adjust, they bring, a, they bring about a very good adjustment. They bring about adjustments very good. They adapt to this situation very well. Whereas reactive people will always be in a situation like they just don't know what is happening around in a situation of confusion, in a situation where they are complaining, in a situation where they are bickering, in a situation where they are like confused, in a situation they always want to blame somebody else or blame the situation, blame the conditions, blame other people for the change. It's always blame game. But proactive people, like I said last week, are people who take the initiative. They take the, they are the people who take initiative. They are the people who take responsibility. Responsibility is a combination of two words. Responsibility is a word which has two parts to it. One is response and ability. So the people who are proactive, they have the sense of responsibility. They have the ability to respond based on their values and not their feelings. I'll say it one more time. People who are proactive, they, have, they carry a great sense of responsibility and responsibility is a combination of two words. Response and ability. So these people who are proactive, they have the ability to respond based on the values that they hold on to or based on the values that they stand on or believe in and not by feeling. Hallelujah. Oh, so I want to take it further this week and talk a little bit more on proactive. Uh, from the, uh, while we want to touch base from the spiritual aspect, we will also take it to our, our, our daily lives. Uh, whether uh, it's a physical life, whether it's a professional life, whether it is a family life, whether it is a marriage uh, life, uh, whether it's a social life. Uh, and society at large. What about thing that where we God wants us to set us in? We can use our spiritual. Uh, we learn something from the spiritual, and we can apply it in our in our other day uh, other faculties in our life. Uh, 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 for example, proactive. We are still talking about proactive. Proactive people. Last week I told you are people who are very intentional. They are very deliberate. They are very intentional. And they don't remain at the thing of just intentional or they have the intent. But they are also people who implement. That means they are people who not only just think, but they are people who also do. People proactive. The word proactive has a word in between that called ACT. ACT. I'll give you a, 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 an acronym for it or abbreviation for that. Or, uh, the, We'll spell out the word act, act today. He said these people are people who implement. Whereas reactive people are in a situation where they look for instructions. Something happens and then they look for orders. They want to follow orders. They want to follow orders. They, instead of being proactive, they, uh, God wants us, uh, instead of being reactive, God wants us to be people of intent. God wants us to be people who would implement, not just think. Not just hearers of the word, but doers of it. Proactive people uh, are people who are, are who, who are loaded with self-confidence. People who are uh, they are in control of time and they are in control of energy. They are a people of uh, you know uh, there is no wastage. They don't let go things just like that wastage and just while away. Reactive people wait for things to happen. Oh, let's look by. Let's stand by. Let's wait by. Let's uh, uh, spend some more time. Let it go by and we'll see. Time will do. Time will. No. Uh, uh, proactive people, they want to be in charge of time. They want to be in charge of energy. And they want to, they have the drive in them. They don't wait for things to happen by itself. 
They want to take things in their hand and want to move forward. That's what proactive people are all about. So even at this point in time, see this, this season maybe last, may last one of the few months or maybe, uh, maybe a year or something, but it'll pass by. But there will be something that will arise maybe five years down the line. There will be something that may arise, a similar kind of situation, maybe more grievous, maybe 10 years down the line. So how do we prepare ourselves? Or should we wait for 10 years and then go? No. We are going to ask God for grace that for every season, there is a season that comes, but that does not stay forever. That moves. We go into the next season. So season upon season. Season never... Listen, we are people who are subject to change all the time. We are put in every time. The economy changes. The weather changes. The people change. Everything just is... We are surrounded by that. Change is a reality that everybody faces. It's not something that is new. It was there right from Adam and Eve and it is going to remain as long as life is there on the face of the earth. Change. We're subject to change. We're all the time under that thing of, of something called as change. Somebody said change is permanent. It just keeps changing. So proactive people are someone who, 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 who refuse to waste. There is no wastage with them. Ask God for grace. That there will be no wastage of your age. There will be no wastage of your energy. There will be no wastage of your time. There will be no wastages in your life. Pray and ask God for grace. That there will be no wastage of your resources. So what if you have very little education? So what if you have very little influence? Even if it is little, that's what matters to God. So what you're from a very little village, insignificant village. So what you come from a very insignificant family. So what if your family doesn't have a great name or a great influence or a big background or or like, no, no, it doesn't matter. With the little, you can do much. Because that's how the language of the reactive people will be. I don't have this and I don't have. I wish I had that. I wish I had this. I wish I had little more this and little more that. That's reactive language. Pray and ask God for grace. See, proactive people are never afraid of criticism. They accept criticism. Reactive people, they want to react. You said this to me, I will say this back. You said two, I will say four. That's reactive. Because they cannot accept criticism. Whereas proactive people, they will receive it, analyze it, what the other person said. If it's a critical uh, way, uh, 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 it's something that has somebody has brought about a criticism, they will not take it as an offense. They will take it, they will listen, analyze and say, oh, is there some issue with me? Is there something that I can improve of? Is there something I can do? Is there something that I'm lacking? Is there something that I can improve? On? They will take and accept constructive criticism. They will not be ready to uh, uh, take out their guns and start shooting or, 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 or take out their bow or arrow and start shooting or like, start giving it back with their words. No, they will analyze things. Proactive people are never dependent on external encouragement. They carry their own motivation. They carry their own encouragement. They don't wait for somebody to, oh, can somebody encourage me? That's what is the nature of a reactive person. They're always looking for someone who's going to lift me up, someone who's going to pick me up, someone who's going to push me, someone who's going to uh, give me that extra thrust or extra push or the extra. They're always with that mindset, encourage me, encourage me and feed me, feed me, feed me. Whereas proactive people are always, I carry my own. Pray and ask God for grace that you would be that son of God, that child of God, that you carry your own motivation. You carry your own encouragement. Pray and ask God for grace. Like, well, that's how we started this series of uh, uh, somewhere in March that David encouraged himself in the Lord. That guy was a proactive man carried his encouragement in the midst of the loss, in the midst of tragedy, in the midst of pain, in the midst of agony, in the midst of difficulty and all kinds of things. The Bible said this guy has something. He encouraged. He was such a proactive person, such an amazing example. He carried his own encouragement. He didn't look. Other people who were there, but they were very reactive in nature. They wanted to stone him. 
because they held him responsible but the bible says instead of reacting back to them the way they were reacting towards him the bible says what he moved away from there and sought the lord and encouraged himself in the lord hallelujah last week again i mentioned about uh, being proactive in our prayer life being spiritual talking from a spiritual point of view we can be proactive in our prayer life and i just mentioned one point on that and i would just skip something there he says what define define your prayer time with god like i told you about jesus he prayed in the morning he prayed in the afternoon he prayed in the evening thank god he did that he covered all the three areas all the time there so no one can say morning is the best time afternoon oh that's a sloppy time no that's not the way no jesus covered in the morning jesus covered the afternoon jesus covered the night look for a time that you are most awake most full of energy fully of enthusiasm yes this is the time i'm fully awake some people are wide awake and full of energy at 6:30 in the morning 5 o'clock in the morning 7 o'clock in the morning pray if that's what who you are go ahead and do it there are some people who are extremely awake fully awake in the night 9 o'clock 10 o'clock they are full of energy if that's the time that you want to give god listen whatever time that you want to give god make sure that's the best time you want to give him not a sloppy time oh i have to go and give my time to god no no you look forward to meet god you look forward to meeting him you look forward with that enthusiasm and joy that's what god is looking for proactive people are enthusiastic about what they do now proactive people not only define certain things proactive people are consistent is very important if you say god i want to develop uh, 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 and, and 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 build a life of prayer then you not only just define it but you also step into consistency consistency is a key thing very 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 important proactive people not only have a plan they have a goal they don't only have have a goal but they are very consistent in that goal reaching that goal consistency consistency is the name of the game is to be consistent day in and day out even if you have committing even if you are, if you are committing to a 5 minute prayer be consistent every day it's better to pray 5 minutes all the 7 days of the week than to than to pray only once a week for 1 hour i'll say it one more time it's better to pray 5 days which is consistent monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday monday tuesday it's better to be consistent every day than not to pray 6 days and just pray for one day and say oh i've come here no no that is not consistency consistency is like every single day you take a step one step like i told you you want to bring a build up a proactive life take small steps take baby steps no problem take small small steps and then build it on many people slip into guilt many people guilt they say slip into shame they start with enthusiasm of one hour of prayer they start for two days three days and after some time they forget about it and then they begin to feel guilt they're, they're guilty about it that they have given up on prayer just, many people are uh, uh, they 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 feel ashamed a little later so take small steps now if you see the consistency that daniel had which is recorded in the bible even though even though the problem was arising even though jealousy was kicking in even though the handwriting that was against him the bible says that even though the lion's den was prepared for him because he disobeyed he did not pay attention to the decree it was an unrighteous decree that was signed out of jealousy to trap him the bible said that did not deter him from praying that did not move him from praying because this man was committed listen he did not get into the chamber to pray because he landed in trouble no that was his habit that's what proactive people are all about they are habitual please be careful proactive people can be also habitual to do negative things i'm not talking about proactive people who do negative things i'm talking about proactive people who have given themselves in doing something that is good something that is positive there are a lot of proactive people who are of as who come forth as negative examples across the globe today 
they are rich people they are poor people they are educated people uneducated you can see a lot of people who are proactive but they are in news for negative things i'm not talking about proactive in going in a, going against god's word i told you proactive people are people who have values in life they have a foundation where they have a lot of values and they're moved by it now then it was somebody who had value for prayer he was not moved by feeling he was not moved oh my gosh that decree is written i better go out and pray and see god no 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 he was moved because he had a lot of value to spend time in the presence of god praying he had a lot of value that he had placed for his personal devotion unto the lord he was devoted to god so whether decree is written or not written whether there is a danger or not a danger whether he is going to get into difficult situation or not get into difficult situation whether he is going to enter into trouble or not his habit was his thing was i am going to seek god not once but three times a day that's how he defined that's how he was he defined his prayer time he defined his prayer moments God, this is my devotion this is my time i'm going to give he allocated it does not matter did not matter to him otherwise now if you look at the life of nehemiah when he heard about how his people were doing how his town was doing or his city was doing how jerusalem was doing he knew the state of the people he knew the walls of jerusalem were broken up he got to know the condition of his people the condition of his family the condition of his hometown the condition of the people at that point they were in in bad shape so what did he do the bible says it moved him it moved him it moved him it grieved him he did not say that's not my problem oh i have studied well i have worked hard and i've come to this place serving in the king's palace and i have arrived and that's it i've made it and he did not say a big hallelujah and say thank you god that i'm in this place i don't care about my family i don't care about my village i don't care about where i come from i don't care that's not my no that's not what he did the bible said it grieved him it it pained him so much it, it the bible said it brought him to his knees and the bible says he fasted and he began to pray he began to seek god and the bible says that when he got to know about this he got to know about this in a certain month called chisle according to english calendar it is between november and december when he got to know this news the bible says from that moment for the next four months from that moment for the next four months he locked himself with god he locked himself with god he locked himself with god in prayer he locked himself in the presence of god in fasting and seeking god as a god prepare me that's what proactive people are all about preparation they prepare themselves the bible says he took responsibility of this situation that's what proactive people are all about people who are proactive they are the ones who take the initiative he took the initiative of seeking god he took the responsibility and as a god i stand in the gap and i ask for forgiveness lord forgive us for we have missed it he stood in the gap for his people before he went out and spoke about it to his people to repent the bible says he took the responsibility he took it on him and said god we have missed it and he not do it for once or twice the bible says he spent good four months consistent in the presence of god seeking him god what's next god what's next god what's next lord how do i do from here how do i do from here how do i do he began to see god and when he stood before the king he did not he did not stammer he did not he was not confused he just did not get nervous no no he knew exactly what he wanted when he faced the king i want this i want that i want this permission i want that provision i want this approval i he took all those things before he launched out that's what proactive people do keep preparing keep preparing keep preparing he prepared <coughs> he prepared for a long time he prepared for a long time but the bible says what the 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 walls were erected or the walls were built in just 52 days but look at the time that he prepared he prepared for a long time he gave himself that much that's what proactive people do they they spend a lot of time preparing they given themselves and i'll tell you church please spend some time preparing yourself 
whatever that you do you want to build a business prepare yourself very well you want to build a house prepare yourself very well you want to build and step into step into ministry and say god i want to serve you i'm called i know that i have a calling of god and everyone has a calling by the way and you want to serve god in that calling that god has called you for then please be, don't be in a hurry to jump in into it prepare very well prepare very well that's what prepare that's what proactive people do they prepare very well god prepared joseph to be the number 2 in egypt just one step below one rank below than pharaoh but it did not happen overnight he he spent about 13 odd years long time when god brought about a replacement for israel king the replacement for Saul he brought David the bible says god took a long time preparing him almost 20 years almost 20 years what was god doing god had forgotten that promise or god forgot about what he had spoken no he was preparing listen that's what god is all about proactive he is in the, he is in the he is in the business of preparation please prepare well please prepare well please prepare well please prepare well the uh, even for the coming of the lord jesus christ the second coming of the lord jesus christ let's prepare church let's prepare these things that are happening around us the commotion it will happen all the time it will happen it will happen it will definitely keep happening generation after generation it will keep happening but for us as a church we need to stand as a son of god as a daughter of god as a as a disciple of jesus christ as a follower of christ we need to be prepared for season we need to be prepared in season and out of season in jesus name hallelujah now you see uh, uh, the, in the book of uh, in the book of psalms psalms 119 look at this psalmist he says lord in a day i have sought you seven times i have praised you seven times wow that is consistency so consistency is a very key thing as far as proactiveness is concerned psalms 119 was 164 yes seven times a day do i praise you because of the righteousness for you for because of your righteous ordinances or judgments seven times a day consistent Listen even if you call and seek God or you begin to pray or you begin to uh, you, you seek the Lord in praising him and worshiping him even if it's for 10 minutes even if it is 5 minutes even if it is 15 you define your time but pray and ask God for grace even if it's once a day make sure that you're consistent in that in Jesus name ask yourself Uh, 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 or rather put a question to yourself on where if you're writing something in the play, in the area that you want to be proactive in which area should i be proactive in which area should i be proactive ask the holy spirit ask the holy spirit and there'll be i'll tell you it'll be more than one in more than one you can be proactive Somebody says pastor I want to get married great good praise god for it Don't get married because you're motivated to get married get married because you will be dedicated to that marriage Don't get oh I want to get motivated because I see other. no 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 don't go for motivation go for dedication that's better Dedication is more heavier Because motivation can come and motivation can go dedication remains it will make you to it, 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 it it'll make that marriage successful again i told you last week motivation and dedication are two different things very fine line it may mean very mean very uh, similar very close but they're two different things david was not motivated uh, as far as his uh, if he, if he was only motivated to take care of the sheep then in that case uh, He, he he wouldn't have gone after the lion and bear just by mere motivation he was dedicated to his sheep he was dedicated to what was assigned to him 
Pastor, I don't have lion and I don't have my, don't have, I don't, I'm not a shepherd. I don't have sheep. So what? No, no. Your work where you work, your employment that you have, that is your sheep. The children that God has given in your hand, that is your sheep. The investment that you have, that can be your sheep. Your joy and your peace, that can be your sheep. By sheer motivation, you will not just say, oh, I'm going to chase after the lion and the bear and take back. No, no, no. You need dedication. You need to be dedicated. Listen, you need to be dedicated to hold on to your joy and your peace also. You need to be dedicated to your marriage. Marriage is your sheep. Dedicated. You will not let go. That's why I said, you don't do marriage or you don't want to step into marriage because you're motivated, but you are dedicated. And I would encourage those young people who desire to be married, pray. That you will not step into marriage because you are motivated. But you will step into marriage because you are dedicated. You will be dedicated to that. That's what made uh, David so different than the others. Like like I told you, uh, just for for, for the sake of defining core values. Motivated people are people who are moved by core values. They are moved by values. They are moved by or they are are influenced by or something that they stand on or something that they hold on to. And as Christians, biblical principles. Proactive people are someone who stand upon biblical principles, who hold on to the truth of God's word. So may, may I ask you a question today? Or may I ask you a question right now? What is your core value? If you say, I want to be proactive. So what is your core value in your life? What do you value in your life? What do we, what do we actually value in our lives? What do we actually put a lot of emphasis or a lot of value on? Let's define something like simple. If you, want me to, if you want me to help you with what core values can be, simple. God first. That's a core value. No matter what I do, wherever I am, no matter what situation I am in, no matter what we do, God first. That's a core value. Core value. Whether I'm in the midst of a harvest enjoying or whether I'm in the thick and the severity that I'm facing because of the famine or dryness, God first. I will seek God first. Seek first the kingdom of God. God first. Another core value. Loving God. That's a core value. Love the Lord our God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength, with all everything inside of you. Love the Lord your God. That's a core value. Core value of loving God first. At the same time, core value. Loving people also. That's a core value. What's another core value that I can think of? Honoring God. That's a core value. Proactive people are moved by values. So what's the core value of our church? What's the core value of our family? What's the core value as an individual? I will honor God first. He says, honor the Lord with your substance. The first fruit of your increase. Honor the Lord. He's honor Him. If you say that if your life is of substance then honor the Lord with your life. If you look at your... uh, Normally, we generally use this term or generally use the scripture when it comes to our income or our wealth. Do you know there is much something more valuable than money is our time. Somebody said time is money. We often hear this thing. Time is money. Time is very precious. So if time is of substance, then honor the Lord with that substance. Honor. That's a core value. God, I will honor you. Another core value that I can think of is integrity and honesty. Our proactiveness, our step into being proactive is like, God, come what may, I will not give up on my integrity. I will not compromise. See, a core value, no compromise. Another core value that I can think of is purity and holiness. Walk in the purity of the heart. Another core value that we can think of. God be glorified. 
that's a core value whether i'm eating or drinking whether i'm walking or sleeping whether i'm talking or i'm quiet whether i'm dressing whether i am doing whatever the works of my hand that i can produce he says what god be glorified what did you say let your light so shine before men that people see the works and they do what they glorify god that's a core value god be glorified another core value that we can think of is responsible is available and accountable a core value where we have a sense of responsibility where we are responsible people at the same time a core value we are always available that's a core value another core value along with that is also being accountable accountable to god and accountable to people now when i talk about responsible it's simple again break it up with i will start and i will finish that's what responsibility is all about you start and don't leave it halfway but you start and you also complete it finish it that's what core value is all about that's what if i start something my core value is i'm going to start something i have the intent and i'm going to implement i'm not just going to leave it undone or half done or most of it done no i am going to finish it that's what core value is all about it's very important to pick up on these core values very important another core value he says the bible says you and i are called according to god's purpose there's a calling of god so do you have value on the purpose of god for your life do i have the value for the purpose of my life on the face of the what is god's purpose do i have value for it do i have value do you know god values his purpose for us do you know god pays a lot of emphasis on our calling so do i also have the same emphasis or do i still or do i have the same kind of a thing that i value the call of god on my life do i value or just take it lightly if you take it lightly the lion and bear can just come and take it away do you know a call is your sheep your calling your purpose is your sheep that's one of the reason that many of us as christians we fail to live our purposes because we allow the lion and bear to come and just take away and that's why we have not made progress as far as our purpose on the face of the earth is concerned as far as our calling is concerned we have not made even progress why because the lion and the bear are just let loose do whatever you want to do no no i want to ask god for grace today pray and ask god for grace this morning and say god i want your grace to rest upon me in such a way that i will put value on the purpose why you called me I want to know your purpose and I want to keep myself I want to lock myself in the purposes of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know see because the list is exhaustive. It can just keep going on on the core values. A core value could be we are unbiased. A core value could be we are equal equality. no racism no gender preference oh men up women below oh the rich up the poor below the educated up the uneducated below no 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 equality is a core value that we can stand upon i do not tolerate inequality i refuse to give in to being racist it's my name listen another core value that we can think of as individuals as a family and as a church sharing is a core value <laughs> that's one of the reason that we are on the face of the earth sharing you define your own core values if you say god i want to be proactive what is valuable for you what is valuable for you for some people core value could be excellence and i we can just go on and on with this for some people it could be perfection that's your core value because you value excellence that's why you want to be proactive and you give in you 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 commit yourself into it and you're consistent in it hallelujah god in jesus name let me let me let me give you an example uh, there was this, this is an amazing guy this is an amazing character that i like in the bible his name is zacchaeus The Bible says there was a time that Jesus was going to pass his village. He knew about Jesus. He heard a lot about Jesus. He heard about this miracle worker. This he heard about this Jesus who can raise the dead. 
to life. He heard about this Jesus who can give sight to the blind. He heard about this Jesus who can make the mute to speak. He heard about this Jesus who can make the deaf to hear. He wanted to see who this Jesus everybody is talking about. And there he gets an opportunity because Jesus is passing his village. And there he gets an opportunity to see him live. He has heard about it. But the Bible says that this man, this man had an issue. The Bible says while Jesus was walking in the, uh, uh, passing through his village, he was surrounded with crowd, lot of people around him. And this, another, that was one problem. The next problem was this guy was a short guy. He was of a short stature and he was trying his best. I cannot see. Maybe jumping, maybe jumping. Where can I see? And little glimpse. But he could not. He could not see him. He had a problem. The problem was not only with him physically here, but he also had another problem that was outside, the people. So double negative. The people were around Jesus, surround Jesus, everything. That's one thing. And next thing, this guy was out. He had both the problems. This is is what proactive people do. They never get discouraged. Proactive people have something that they have. They have made up their mind means I am going to do it. I am going to do it. I am going to do it. I am like Zacchaeus. I have to see Jesus today. I don't know whether he's going to pass by my village another time or not. But this is my best opportunity. So this guy, the Bible says, he knew Jesus was going to pass a certain street or pass in a certain place. He knew that this is a route that Jesus was going to The Bible says, he ran ahead of the Bible. Please take your time and read it in the book of Luke chapter 19. Take your time and read it. Take your time and read it. The Bible says, what? Well, look at this proactive person. He ran ahead. Ran ahead. That's what proactive people are all about. They always run ahead of time. They're always ahead of time. And then what does he do? He spots out the, 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 the tallest tree, a sycamore tree, and he looks up it and, say, and he climbs it. Listen, a short man must be thinking, how will I do? No, he doesn't have time to think. He doesn't have time to waste. As I told you, proactive people do not waste time. He does not waste time. He catches the thing and he says, what? I know Jesus is going to pass his way. He doesn't want to miss it upon you. He climbs up the sycamore tree and there he's on top. And there he has an un interrupted view of Jesus like no one else all to himself no one to disturb he can do a, he can have an a, a amazing aerial view you know today we have drone shots have you seen the drone oh it can capture the it looks awesome beautiful when you're on the face of the earth, when you're walking on the ground, you have limited vision. But when the moment you go up, you have a bigger vision. Your thing just broadens up. That's exactly what happened to this guy. That's exactly what happens to proactive people. Listen, reactive people can see something that is on the surface. But proactive people get an aerial view. That's from the top. Oh, I can see that. Oh, I can see that. That's where God wants you to be. Rest is history. What happened with Zacchaeus? He not only got a glimpse of Jesus, he had a conversation with Jesus. He not only had a conversation with Jesus, he had fellowship with Jesus in his house. Because Jesus invited himself and said, I'm coming home to your house for, for a meal. He spent, he not only had a glimpse, but he had wonderful fellowship with Jesus. This is what proactive people are all about. He had his desire to just have a glimpse. That was his drive. That was his value. I just want to see who this Jesus is. Do you and I have, let's ask that question. Do you and I have that core value of seeking Jesus? A core value. I want to seek him. I will see him. I will see Jesus. <laughs> and don't be surprised. He shows up in your house where he has a fellowship with you. Other people saw Jesus went home. But this one was somebody. Jesus came home. Stayed with him. He dined with him. That's where God wants us to be. That's where God wants us. Not just have a glimpse of God and go. No. He want, this is what proactive people are all about. They invite Jesus. They take Jesus home. 
I pray in this, even as we're studying of this proactiveness of being proactive, I pray that you would take home Jesus. I pray that you would have the, you would take this word to your heart. You would take this word and say, God, I want you to have fellowship with me in my house. I want you to have a one-on-one -on -one personal fellowship with me. In Jesus' name. You remember another word in the, another incident in the Bible? It was not. It is not a fairy tale, or it's not a fiction. Uh, it's not a, a, a myth, but this is a factual history as recorded. It's recorded in history. It's something that happened. The Bible says there was a lady who had issue of blood for twelve long years. The Bible says that this lady spent all her money, all her wealth on doctors. One of the uh, one of the gospel writers says that she finished her situation grew worse. She didn't get better; it became worse. Twelve long years. Imagine for a minute: twelve long years of suffering, twelve long years of bleeding, day in and day out. Not a single day of rest. Not a single day that she wakes up and she finds. Oh no! Every single day there is leakage. Every single day there is bleeding. Every single day there is stench. Every single day there is unclean. Every single day suffering. Every single day grief. Every single day. pain every single day there is ache every single day not one day break 12 long years 12 long years she also had a situation jesus was on his way to heal somebody else jesus had said because the bible says this man came to him called jairus and my 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 kid is unwell i want you to come to my house and just put your hands over my child pray and my, i believe my child will recover please and jesus said yes here i am and jesus is on his way to someone else's house to pray for that person who is sick and the bible says in the midst of all this please pay attention to this the bible says this woman who has a issue of blood she sees her opportunity and the bible says what that she moves in the crowd and does not touch the shoulder of jesus she does not touch the hair head or head of jesus she doesn't touch the palm of of jesus is hand she doesn't touch here and there where does she touch the bible says she touches the helm of the garment the edge of the garment the edge the tassel the bible says the tassel of the garment see there are time that jesus would want to come to someone's house to pray that is one way of getting a healing But there are times when you look at this woman, you don't wait for Jesus to come to your house for healing. You go to Him. The Bible says, on His way, on route. The Bible says she is keen in and touch it. Don't wait for your healing to come. That's what proactive people do. They don't wait for things to happen. They don't wait for things to get healed in their life. Though they don't wait for things to come as a breakthrough. No, there are people who are proactive who go and get it. they don't wait but they go and get it they go that's what happens to proactive people listen if you look at the scripture it says she touched the helm of his garment at the bottom she touched it listen there was every chance of a stampede if there because the bible if you read the scriptures very well the gospel says that there were people when some when when she she touched jesus jesus said somebody has touched me and power is gone off and peter said lord you know how the people are thronging you know how the people are crowding you and you're asking the, that shows jesus was crowded with people surrounded with people and through that she's slipping a hand she's not throwing herself on him she is trying to sneak in through and sneak in through slip in through those crevices and trying to just touch imagine there could be a stampede should have been crushed proactive people take risks proactive people take risks they are not bothered whether they are going to be crushed or not no i need it i want it simple desperation desperation pushed her to that level i am taking it home today is my breakthrough i'm taking it home i wonder whom am i speaking to you today whom am i speaking to this morning are you bleeding 
Is your age bleeding? Is your time bleeding? Is your marriage bleeding? Is your money bleeding? Is your career bleeding? Don't wait for things to happen. Don't wait for Jesus is going to come to my house, then only things will happen. No, no, hold a minute. The Bible says what? En route to somebody else's blessing, she keyed in and she got her. That's what proactive people do. They pull in. They pull in. They pull in the power. They pull in the power. They pull in their healing. They don't wait. Because that was a culture where only men were around. Women were not counted in the marketplace. They were not allowed to move in the marketplace. But the Bible says what? She defied every odd. She defied every culture. She defied everything. No, I need it because she was desperate. Listen, the Bible says her situation grew worse. Listen, has your bleeding got you to a place where your situation has become worse than before and there is no remedy? Listen, church, don't wait any longer while you're bleeding. Do not wait any longer. Get up and say, God, I'm going to touch the helm of Jesus. I don't care the resistance. I don't care the crowd. I don't care what is around me, surround me. What is it that is stopping me? Is my gender stopping me? Is the, is the people outside stopping me? Whatever is my circumstance, whatever is my condition, is that stopping me? I'm going to still touch him. Don't wait for your breakthrough. Go get it. Go get your breakthrough. Go get your breakthrough. Don't expect Jesus is going to come to my house. Somebody is going to bring Jesus to my house. No, no, hold a minute. Look at this woman. The Bible says her name also is not mentioned. But the Bible says what? When Jesus looked at her and said, Great faith. Great faith. Great faith. Pray and ask God for grace. That you would have a proactive faith. This is the definition of proactive faith. You don't wait for things to happen and then you say, oh, I have faith now. No, no, no. Look at what the Bible says. She stepped out first. She got a healing. Many a times the thing comes now, I will trust God. I will have faith when God does something for me. Then I will have faith. No, look at this proactive faith. She waited she didn't wait for the healing to come by herself, uh, come by to her, or Jesus come to her house, or somebody said, oh, this one is suffering from, from, from this issue of blood for 12. Can you lay hands? No, no, no. The Bible says what? She took it in her hands. I need God now. I need to stop bleeding. Like what? Uh, like I asked this question, is any one of you bleeding today? Would you rise up and say, God, I am done with bleeding and I'm going to touch you. I'm done with bleeding. I'm done with bleeding. I'm done with bleeding. I'm done with bleeding. Do you know as long as you are bleeding, you can never be fruitful. A woman who is always having an issue of blood, having an issue of blood, do you know she can never be fruitful if she is married? It just blocks it. So if you say, God, I've not been successful or I've not been fruitful, I've not been fruitful, it's simply maybe you're bleeding. Can you check that, please? And if you're bleeding, would you just push your way through and say, God, I will touch the helm of your garment. In Jesus' name. The Bible says, see this proactive people, listen to it. I, have not, I don't think so I shared this in our church ever, but I'm going to share it for the first time. I've shared it somewhere else couple of places, but this is the first time I'm going to share it. Please pay attention to this. How many minutes, sir? The Bible says, Jesus was preaching one day, and while he was preaching, he moved the crowd into a desert place, away from the city, away from the village, secluded place, desert. And the Bible says, he preached, 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 taught, all that, that he did. And then, the Bible says, it was evening time. It was evening time. And when evening time came, the disciples looked at Jesus, enough, great teaching, super. I think it's time for us to send these people away. Uh, it's night time, it's evening time. And uh, before it's too late, 
send them home at least they can go home and eat food and they can help themselves with their meal and uh, they come to jesus with this and jesus said one of the gospels jesus asked a question what do you have just go ahead and do it what are you going to feed them go ahead and do it and one of the disciples comes and says jesus we have just about in today's language you say okay 200 dollars or 200 dinari what is going to do with so many people around it's not going to help jesus said what do you have jesus said what do you have right now just bring it and when they looked around they found one young boy a young lad who was carrying his meal and the meal was not uh, when you, when i say uh, and uh, was not great what do you mean by great It means portion there was not large portion he didn't ca- he didn't carry meal for the whole battalion for the whole army he just carried for himself five loaves and and one of the places record says two small fish five loaves two small fish just a, the size of his stomach good enough for that one one time meal now most of the time we talk about this character and then the bible says what they brought it to jesus jesus took the bread broke it and then distributed and it was multiplied and the bible says uh, 5000 men apart from women and children uh, ate to their hearts content full full their stomachs were filled they ate not a single person went home hungry the bible says they ate till they were full So they don't just have a bite; they had a stomach full. And the Bible says the fragments that were collected, the fish bone, the pieces, the heads, and all that they carried, and they found out twelve baskets full. Now, most of the time we end the story here or learn about the story, but there is one person that is not spoken of, of spoken of, and that is uh, it is not uh, documented in this. but it's very much written in between the lines if only we read it and we only uh, look at it deeply into it i see a very proactive mother or probably i see a very proactive sister or probably i see a very proactive person in this boy's life who packed lunch who knows how long you're going to be there with jesus who knows what time you'll uh, be released back to come home or I'll, i don't know how long will it take by the, by the time you return home whether you'll get a chance to eat or not who knows when you're going to get hungry who knows whether you're going to get bread on the way who knows that you'll be able to sustain till evening the bible says what there was a lunch packed for that boy or a meal packed for that boy an unspoken character an undocumented character but i look at that unspoken undocumented character somebody who's very proactive thinking far ahead for the baby thinking far ahead for that boy i want to appreciate that mom or rather i want to appreciate their sister or maybe an appreciate that aunt i don't even know maybe it could have been a dad but looking at the culture at that point in time it has to be someone who's a lady because women were just confined to do kitchen duties women were confined to raise up babies nothing else so in that culture it had to be some woman in that house now why do i want <coughs> why do i want to highlight this point proactive why do i want to see why do i want to just mention that listen the bible says that this boy carry that lunch box listen that mother or that aunt or that sister who ever packed that lunch little did she know or little did that person know that they were packing ingredients in that lunch box would become miracle for somebody else so why am i talking about this doesn't matter whether you find that mom's name there or not doesn't matter whether your name is mentioned ever or not you just do not know the ingredients that you're packing for a miracle for somebody else don't look where is the name of that mother don't look for the name where your name is going to be mentioned that you are packing those ingredients for a miracle for somebody else be proactive moms and dads in the house every week i bring out something for the mom and the dad while i tell you i am telling you myself also don't look at the children and ignore them give them portions pack them up pack them up load them up with ingredients 
load them up with ingredients from now itself. That ingredients will be the source of a miracle for somebody else. That the miracle, that ingredients will not only be for their satisfaction, but the ingredients that you pack them with, you equip them with, you supply them, that same very, very ingredients can be used for a miracle for feeding a thousand or thousands, I would say. Deposit. Pack your child every day. Pack your child with something that is not just beneficial for them or just, like I told you, our core value is sharing. This boy shared his meal. This boy shared his meal. He did not hold back. No, mama gave it for me. This is my favorite. No, no. The Bible says he gave it in the hands of Jesus. Raise your children with a core value of sharing. The Bible says it landed in the hands of Jesus. It became, uh, uh, it became a meal for thousands that day. Hallelujah. I pray that you would get wisdom today. Pack your children from now itself. Load your children with your children from this very age. Say, uh, 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 what do you call supply with the ingredient equipment in the ing- with the ingredients um, ingredients that will be used for a miracle for somebody else in the name of Jesus. It does not matter if your name is ever mentioned or not. Does not matter. The name. Please find the name of the mother. As a matter of fact, it's not even said about the mother here. You got to read in between the lines. There are many times that God doesn't speak. You have to figure it out. There are a lot of things that God wants to say when it is unspoken, when it is undocumented. It is for us to find out. Pray and ask God for grace that you would be that proactive person. That you would know how it, what it means to, 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 to look for those ingredients. To package those ingredients that become us, uh, the ingredients for a miracle for somebody else. Somewhere else. In Jesus' mighty name. Mary, at the uh, mother of Jesus, at the wedding of Cana, the Bible says, at the wedding of Cana, the mother of Jesus, at the wedding of Cana, the Bible says what? The Bible says, the, the wine got over. And when the wine got over, look at what Mary did. She came to Jesus and do something about it. Do something now. She came to Jesus and Jesus said, woman, why are you involving me in this? I've got nothing to do with this. And then he passes that a, a, a very profound statement at that point in time. Oh, my time has not come. My hour has not yet come. Mary did not say, okay, I'll wait for your time. Thank you. I'll come some other time. No, she didn't do all that. She didn't do all that. She did not wait, tell me when, when to, uh, she did not tell me when your time is ready, please tell me that. No, no, no. The Bible says what? She did not wait. You know, that's what moms are good at, right? When children don't listen, you see the tone of the mother changes in the house. You better do it. The Bible says, she told the men around in that place, just do what he is asking you to do. Rest is history. You know what she did? That's what proactive people do. They don't wait for their breakthrough time. They pull it beforehand. She didn't wait for another moment. She said, no, this is my time. This is my moment. This is my defining moment of what God spoke to me years back about Jesus. This is my defining moment. This is the moment that I waited for this long. And the Bible says what? She brought that miracle before. She brought that time before. Jesus said, oh, I'm still not yet done. No, I still have to do some more. No, no. She said, no, now is the time to launch you. Now is the time to launch you. Now is the time to launch you. And she pushed in. And the Bible says what? Being so proactive in faith. That's what her faith was. No, she didn't tell, I will wait for another time. She told the boys. She told the men, hey, just do, take orders from my son. Just do what as he says. Rest is history. In Jesus' name. Listen, we can be talking about great characters in the Bible who have been proactive. They didn't wait for things to happen. They didn't uh, began to react after changes came in. No, no. The Bible said they became the agent of change. They, the proactive people are not someone who, 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 who cry about problems. 
They will not somebody who, who, who will, uh, you know, uh, 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 rather they are very well prepared, anticipating problem, and while they are anticipate, anticipating problems, they also are ready with the solution. I can, you know, a week after week, or month after about two months, through uh, two weeks, four weeks, I still keeping this, bring this, yeah, this great guy, because and there's so much thing to learn about him. There's always something different to learn about this, of this, of this man, who's, who the Bible says that he was a man after God's heart. King David. The Bible says, going back to that, you want to be proactive, then be proactive with this 4H. And we're going to rise up and pray. If you want to be proactive, be proactive with this 4H. Because that's what we learn when he went to face Goliath. Even before he could face Goliath, he was ready with this. Because that's how his lifestyle was. The Bible says that when he wanted to, when he heard about Goliath, uh, Goliath challenging, and for forty days he was screaming his head off. For the forty days he was intimidating the people of God, and forty days the Bible says the army of Saul were running away and gay, okay, you know, getting into caves and hiding, hiding. The moment he came, the Bible says the moment he rose up, people will just vanish. When David got to know about this, when David got to know about this, when David heard about this, the Bible says, who is this guy? And he went to challenge. And when that thing reached the ears of Saul, the Bible says, Saul called for him. And then he tells Saul, listen, this man, the Bible says, is a man after God's heart. And this man who is after God's heart, he tells Saul something very profound. In that chapter 17, verse 32, 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 32. 32. He says what? This is what the first thing is. What? This is what we learn of being proactive from the life of David. The, the, what is, the, the four H, the first H that we learn from the life of David. What is the first H? Know God's heart. Know God's heart. This was the man who knew. He knew the heart of God. He knew the heart of God. Somebody who knows the heart of God can speak this word. A person who knows the heart of God can speak this word. He told David, told Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. For your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. He knew the heart of God. Only a man who knows the heart of God can speak this word. How dare does this one shall come to challenge the armies of the living God? First thing, H, know the heart of God. You want to be proactive, then you need to be someone who knows the heart of God. Very Knowing the heart of God. Now see the, what the Bible says. The, what is the next H? Quickly. One thing is to know the heart of God. Next thing is, is to honor God. Is to honor God. Is to, not just good enough to know the heart of God. Next thing is to seek to honor God. That's exactly what happened. Now the Bible says that uh, when he got to know about the army, uh, he got to know about uh, the Goliath's challenge. At the same time, he also got to know that King Saul was dangling motivation goodies. Oh, if you only defeat this guy, you will be the son-in-law to the king. Your family will be, from ex uh, will be exempted from paying, paying tax. That's what the motivation level was for the soldiers. But when it came to David, when he heard that, he says, who is this man? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine who's come to defy or challenge the armies of the living God? Who is he brought about honor. Who is this guy? For him, it was not motivation. For him, it was not the reward. It was not what he's going to get in return. Oh, listen, if you want to honor God, it's never about what is it in turn for me. What am I going to get out of this? What's my benefit? That's not what honor is all about. Honor is like, God, what is in it for you? You want to be proactive? Then seek to honor God. The next edge, the Bible says what? He trusted or kept trusting in the help from the Lord. One thing is to have a have what do you call it? Know the heart of God. One thing is to know or honor, honor or seek to honor God. And third one is trusting in the help of God. What did he say? Verse 45 and verse 46. See what did he say? Look at verse 45 and verse 46. When he came to when he came to Goliath face to face, the Bible says he told he told the Philistine, "You come to me 
with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I have come to you, or come before you, in the name of the Lord of hosts, the Lord God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Verse 46. See what did he say? He said, this day the Lord, see what he said, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. Simple, trusting in the help of God. He did not trust his, in his own ability. See, if you see from military point of view, it does not make sense. Somebody is going with a shield, with a spear, with a javelin. He, somebody is going with all these things, uh, uh, military equipment, and the opposite person is coming with a sling. It doesn't make sense at all. But in, at this point in time, he is fully trusting in the hand of the Lord. That brings me to the fourth point. One thing is to know the heart of God. Second thing is to seek the honor of God. Third thing is to trust that God is going to help you. And the fourth one, stepping out into the hand of God. Stepping out into the hand of God. Look at verse number 38. Look at verse number 38. Look at verse number 38. He says, and Saul clothed David with his armor and he put the bronze helmet on his head and clothed him. Verse 38. And he clothed him with a coat of mail. Verse 39. See what the Bible says. And David, what did he do? He fastened his sword, his armor and tried to walk. For he had not tested them. And David said unto Saul, I cannot walk with these. I cannot go out. For I have not tested them. What did he do? David took it off. He took off that did not belong to him. It belonged to somebody else. Rather, when he stepped in, he stepped in the hand of God. Hallelujah. Listen. Anchor for our life is very important. And what are we anchored in as far as God's word is concerned? One of the scriptures that we need to be anchored in. The eternal God is our refuge. The eternal God is our refuge. And underneath are his everlasting arms. That's what David stepped into. In the everlasting arms of God. He says underneath us is our everlasting arm. And then he says what? I will thrust the enemies before you and say unto you, destroy. It's in Deuteronomy. It's in Deuteronomy. The scripture that I spoke to you is in Deuteronomy 33, verse 29. Take your time and read at home. He said, eternal God is our refuge. Underneath are his everlasting arms. He will thrust out our enemies before us and say, destroy them. See, it's not just God taking care of us from down. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 says, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and in due time he will lift you up. So you not only just step into the hand of God, you come under the hand of God. You want to be proactive? Be proactive with these four things. Know the heart of God. Seek the honor of God at all times. Trust in the help of God at all times. And the fourth one, when you want to step in, step in in the hand of God. Step into that. Step into the word of God. And he says what? He says, uh, he says what? No man shall be ever able to pluck you out of my hand. He says, no one will be ever able, be, will, will ever be able to pluck you out of my hand, says the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's arise and pray then. There are so many things that I still want to talk about. Maybe I'll, some other time I'll talk about it. We're going to rise and pray. While we do this, while we pray, I want you to, I, I want to start with asking a question. What is it that you want to take as a decision now? Or you have the intent now to be proactive in? And we're going to ask God for grace in that specific area. Are we pro you say, God, I want to be used in, in the ministry. I want to be an evangelist. I want to be a pastor. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a prophet. I want to be an apostle. My question is, have we started taking steps already? 
Like I told you last week, Jesus did not step into public ministry and then open the scriptures or study the scriptures. No, for 30 long years, he prepared himself and three and a half years of amazing, powerful ministration. That when he spoke the word, people were amazed. Where did he get this power from? Where did he get this authority from? Where did he get this revelation from? How can he speak with such power? They were amazed. And they even said, oh, he doesn't speak and preach like the scribes, like other people. He's something extraordinary. He's something amazing. He did not start that thing when he was in public ministry. He was doing it way before. The question I want to ask and I will leave it with you. You answer. What is it that you want to say, God, I want to be proactive in? Proactive in studying. There are so many things that the Bible talks about. Listen, there is a question that we, if we ask, does God want us to be proactive? The answer is yes, 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 yes. If I get if I get a chance to speak to you next week, I'll talk to you from the scriptures. Does God want his church? Does God want his son and in his daughter, the disciple of Jesus Christ, to be a proactive person? The answer is yes. And it is scriptural. I'll talk to you probably next week. But for now, what is it that you want to be proactive? You want to be proactive in your career, then you got to start taking taking steps from now. You want to be proactive in your academics and you want to achieve something, you got to take steps now. Our children. From now, from this age. You want to step out and say, God, I want to be useful in the ministry. I want to serve God. Maybe in the years now, you want to be full time. You're going to say, God, I want to take those steps now. Now, whatever thing that you want to do, whether academics, whether career, whether marriage, whether investment, whether ministry, whatever, even in your physical appearance, whatever you want to do. So you're going to say, God, I want to know your heart. And I want to do it, Lord, from that angle where I will honor you. I want to do it from that angle where I trust the help is from you. At the same time, I step out in such a way, God, I step into your hand. It is safe to step into the hands of God. It is safe. Because the Bible says what? No man will be able to pluck you out of my hand. Thank you God. Church, take your time this week or take your time this day. Write down the core values of your life. Write the core values of your own life personally. You want to be a proactive person? You need to have values first. What do you believe in? What do you stand on? Love you, God. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The saints of God said aloud, Amen.